Hello there. Today I am coming with new topic from Flax Golden Tales. This is a poem to his Quay Mistress by Andrew Marvel. This is prescribed in our bachelor level compulsory English. And we are discussing with the poem. First of all, let me read out the poem. The title is To His Quay Mistress. It's a poem by Andrew Marvel. This is a real text. Had we but world enough and time, this queenish lady were no crime. We would sit down and think which way to talk, to walk and pass our long love's day. Thou by the Indian Ganges side, search Ravi's point. I by the tide of Humber would complain. I would love you ten years before the flood, and you should, if you please, refuse till the conversion of the Jews. My vegetable love should grow vaster than empires and more slow, and hundred years should go to praise thine eyes and on thy forehead gaze. Two hundreds to adore each race, but thirty thousand to the rest, an age at least to every part, and the last age should show your heart, for lady you deserve this state. Nor would I love at low rate. But at my back I always hear times winged chariot hurrying near, and yonder all before us lie. Desert surpassed eternity, thy beauty shall no more be found, nor in thy marble vault shall sound. My echoing song then warm shall cry the long preserved virginity and your quaint honor turn to dust and into ashes all my lust. The grave's fine and private place, but none I think do dear embrace. Now, therefore, while the youthful hue sits on thy skin like morning dew. And well thy willing soul transpires at every four with stand fires. Now let us sport us while we may, and now like amorous birds of prey, rather at once our time devote than languish in his slow chap power. Let us roll all our strength and all our sweetness up into one ball. And tear our pleasures with rough stripe through the form, through the iron gates of life. Thus, though we cannot make our sun stand still, at we shall, at we will make him run. And this is all poem here. Uh, the poem, uh, as you see, it makes three arguments here. The first argument here the speaker makes in the poem is, if we had all the time in the world, I would have time enough to make you fall in love with me. The second point or second argument that he makes is, but we don't have all the time in the world, nor even all the time in our lifetime. And the third point or third argument he makes is, so let me seduce you now. I can't wait no longer. Uh, the speaker's main purpose is to sport with his lady. Simply. Her youth and beauty are physical attraction for her beauty. By using the time token, limitation of time, uh, and uh, not being the eternal creature or long-lasting creature, he makes his lady convinced that she should accept his proposal. And his proposal is an act of love making, rolling all their strength and up into one ball. It's time 
to talk about the story of the poem. To his quemstress is divided into three stanzas or poetic paragraphs. It is spoken by a nameless man. He, he doesn't reveal his name here. Who doesn't reveal even his biographical details. And he is addressing that woman who is also nameless. And she doesn't have full description here, biographical description. In the poem, the speaker addresses a young woman who has been slow to respond to his sexual advances. In the first stanza, he describes how he would love her if he were to be uncumbered by the constraints of normal lifespan. He could spend centuries admiring each part of her body and her resistance to his advances that is her queerness would not be a crime and it would not discourage him. In the second stanza, he laments how such human life is. Once life is over, the speaker contains the opportunity to enjoy one another is gone, as no one embraces in death. In the third or last stanza, the speaker urges the woman to accept his advances and argues that in loving one another with passion, they will both make the most of the brief time they have to live. Okay, uh, it's time to analyze uh, the poem and its literary techniques. Let me interpret the poem, okay? To his quam stress is a dramatic monologue in which the speaker addressed to his lady. In this poem, there are arguments and counter-arguments, as well as a conclusion. The poem is also different from conventional quarterly love poetry because in the first two stanzas, the speaker used a lot of exaggeration or overstatement, hyperboles of time and space. The first stanza is the farb argument from line 1 to 4. The speaker expressed his wish that if he and his lady had enough time, he would take the conventional way to phrase and quote his lady. But the following lines Exaggeration of time and space make it clear that conventional way of courtship is simply impossible for them. And such exaggeration serves as an irony to conventional ways of courtship. First, from line 5 to 10, the speaker used the distance between the Indian Ganges and uh, English Humber to represent the vast space and the length of time is suggested by 10 years before the flood till the conversion of the Jews. In line 11 and 12, the word vegetable implies the slowly growing sense of the spirit's love. Faster than empire is and more slow, again shows the exaggeration of space and time. From line 13 to 17, the speaker said he would use hundreds of years to phrase his lover's different body parts like forehead, breast, eyes, and other those. Maybe you'll be talking about the hips, thighs, and other things. And especially he's focusing on his lover's breast and eyes. Such expressions only implies their lack of time. Although the speaker declared that the lady did 
the job such a high phrase she is not a you know, lady of low level lover she is a high rate lover and she has such quality such beauty such passion such emotion and such devotion the fact is that high praise was impossible given their circumstances it's because the times when the chariot the second stanza is where we see the counter argument with the word but it's hammering hammering like the but you know, the but um conjunction here at the very beginning of the second stanza is hammering all the proposal that he was making all the conditions all the attempts he was making to love to love and so his devotion and so his sentiment to his lover in the beginning line but with the word but in the beginning of line 21 we see the change in the speaker's tone and he is very much aware he seems to be practical now he can't be ideal the speaker said that apparently they were losing time because times when the chariot is hurrying near it is approaching and is trying to capture the images of natures of past eternity this is the uncertainties lying before the speaker and his lady love besides from line 25 to the end of the second stanza the speaker created a terrifying image about the results of his lovers not accepting his courtship and he is a kind of threat to the lover and one trying to kill her virginity it's not an ordinary line it's trying to you know the lover is trying to make her fearful and trying to make her suck what will happen if i do not accept i do not submit to this uh, young court court maker or young lover and this handsome fellow he is trying to take the test of life and making me quite passionate and it seems that the speaker means if they don't enjoy themselves to the fullest at this very moment they might not have another chance and they will lose this on the other hand the speaker is trying to persuade and trying to convince his lover to accept his courtship and to make love with him by telling her the horrifying image of with sexual connotation as i have already mentioned however in the last stanza that's the conclusion uh, the meaning of this poem is elevated taken to that higher range because the last stanza talks about universal human experience universal human experience not just courtly love the images of morning dew suggest the quick flashing and gradual disappearance of the lady jo and the words like transpires and instant fires suggest the sense of transience ephemerality or ephemeralness okay time shortness in human life then from line 37 till the end of the poem the speaker reveals his desire to swallow time rather than to be swallowed he seems quite practical and he makes his lover aware aware about it the speaker reveals his desire to swallow time rather than to become the, rather than become the victim of time he called to this lady that they should gather their strength together into one ball and conquer conquer the tortures of life together here the tortures are implied by iron gates of life which also means passages of time each human being has to go through an experience the last lines are paradoxical because the speaker has previously expressed his wish to compete with time and that there is not enough time for them but he also wanted to make their son run faster and he is using the pun uh, on the word son and he wants to make uh, produce a son from this lover and uh, but here 
He is using the word SUV and son. And to, to make their son run fast, which means the time could go fast too. To sum up, in to his quam stress, the speaker used many images and metaphors to express his opinions. The poem is special because the speaker didn't take the conventional way to quote his life and because the conclusion is not only the speaker's feeling about quoting the lady but also everyone's desire of not being devoured by time, not being swallowed by time, not being victim of time and using time properly, knowing the value of time, knowing the value of youth and becoming practical in life. Through this elevation, the meaning of all form is expanded and elevated too. Okay? Uh, you have got vocabulary and notes here in the slides, you can see. And Nepali version of the poem is also given here in the slides. And let me talk about the four levels of reading with the form. The first level of reading here uh, is literal comprehension. The speaker addresses a beautiful lady telling her not to be resistant to his proposal. He urges a young woman, his lady, to enjoy the sexual bliss before death claims her. The speaker argues that the lady's shyness and hesitancy would be acceptable if the two had all enough and time, and that crime would be reasonable for him, he claims. He explains that if they had all the time in the world, he would have no problem with the relationship moving at slow motion. But since they are human beings, life has a short period, so it is better to utilize the present moment, otherwise her beauty, long preserved virginity and honor will be pain. Why should she delay for her? for his sexual pleasure, being embraced to him, then she would be a part of taking pleasure when she is in fascinated mood and she would again get more pleasure than he is expecting to get from her. Interpretation, your second level of reading here, to his quiet stress is a love form relating to emotion fashion and sexual seduction. In the poem, the poet may be talking about time, love and sex. The queerness of the lady is the commonality in love poetry where mostly the lover tries to seduce the lady love who at first seems reluctant, hesitant, queer. He uses different tricks to court the beloved so that she would not delay his quick sexual advancement. For a lady, lovemaking is not important. Rather, his passions and devotion to her are important in the long run. Actually, what uh, the lady says, what the lady expresses is not mentioned, but it's a kind of reading here. However, for the lover, awaiting her readiness for seduction makes him re restless. He doesn't want his mistress being an idealist, running away from time, running away from his relation. He expects her to become practical with the worry time that ravishes her skin beauty and ripe youth, having not a suitor. The poem gives equal importance to both sides of the issue, reminding the value of time and enjoy the youth when you arrive. This is a coffee diem poem. It's, you know, enjoy whenever you get. This is a model and it's uh, reminding us 
to make the good use of time. To his poem stress is a Carpe Diem poem as I already mentioned, following the example of Roman poets like Horace. It urges a young woman to enjoy the pleasures of life before death claims her. Indeed, the poem is an attempt to seduce the titular poem stress. In the process, however, the speaker dwells with grotesque intensity on death itself. Here's third level of interpretation, third level of reading here. It's critical thinking among these four levels. To his poem stress, uh, it is meant here a woman loved by and courted by a man. It's a female sweetheart. The lady love is a metaphysical poem of 17th century. It's a, you know, one of the representative poems of metaphysical school of poetry. In which the speaker is attempting to persuade his resistant lover that they should have sexual intercourse as soon as possible. Here, when Andrew Marble makes three arguments. The first argument is, if we had all the time to the world, if we had all the time in the world, I would have time enough to make you fall in love with me. Number two, but we don't have all the time in the world, not even all the time in our lifetime. The third point, a third argument here. So let me seduce you now. These three points or three arguments that the speaker makes here in the poem. The poet is a, you know, the poet is a metaphysical poet, but it's a different type of metaphysical poetry. And here it belongs to love, love category. Love is such a thing that makes the people so crazy, delighted, sorry, joyful, romantic, gloomy, frank, sentimental, hopeful, regretful, optimistic, pessimistic, whatever you talk about, all these points and love is such a source of inspiration that makes you feel everything. Source, it's a source that it makes you feel everything. The poet seems so crazy to quench his thirst for making love with his lady love. She is so right and he can't control, he can't restrain looking at her that right body. He doesn't like to live without her love. If she is not ready to make the love with him, she cannot revive her youth and beauty when she grows old. They will not get the opportunity to make passionate love when they grow old and die. The world will not see the sun stop to see their love. To his quam stress is a clever, well-structured poem using a dramatic monologue technique. The speaker is is there, he is speaking along and the listener, the lady doesn't make any comment, just she is merely a listener. The poem is an argument in quite strict logical form. The first stanza had we blah blah, the second stanza but blah blah and third now therefore blah blah. The logical form of the poem runs in syllogic, syllogistic, syllogistic structure if, but, therefore. There is full end rhyme A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. In love poetry, hyperboles, imagery, similes, and metaphors are common. 
these figures of speech are common in metaphysical poetry especially here we talked about love poetry there is realistic reading of time but poets perception of his quaint stress beauty and her submission for his seduction is unacceptable youth is not merely a period for sensual passion to appear as the amorous birds hyper love is that feeling which cannot be avoided because love sex and the need for a spring are all top priorities that a man keeps in his life but this if the man has all these priorities making the lady ready to love him ready to sleep with him is very important so he is trying to pursue it, trying to convince and trying to uh, make her ready to submit with him and then his mission of having married and having children would be fulfilled uh, let's talk about assimilation what i got after reading the poem what lesson what is that what is similar to me after reading the relation what is my experience regarding this and how can i apply uh, reading uh, to his questions to my life and to my studies if i had enough time i would focus on to study the great epics of the world like the mahabharata the ramayana the iliad the odyssey the Fair paradise lost the sakuntal shlokana along with other world famous epics i would start to study nepali epics a long decade before my parents tied the nuptial knot i would spend a half century of years to study the hindu epics alone next two decades should go for studying greek and roman epics a hundred years should go to study nepali epics and at last I would open the pages of English epics since they deserve the stack and I'm not an ordinary epic reader. But almost two decades of my life time passed and I have only completed some chapters from the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. Since I've just joined from my bachelor level and I have to study my course books and resource books reference books our semester examinations are coming near therefore i should study my course books along with my passion for studying epics from the world literature i should not spend even a minute without my focus on stories having read this poem poem having read this poem i have understood the happening Having read this poem I have understood happiness which is associated to the time every moment of life is enjoyable and it would be more pleasing if I am with my loving partner had I a lover I would make I would have made her realize the value of time youth and beauty I would have focused my attention on physical bodies making together in the act of love making after reading uh, after discussing four levels of reading with the text to its core mistress it's time to talk about the synopsis or the summary of the poem the speaker addresses his lady love to persuade her not to delay in responding him and his proposal he explains that if they had all the time in the world you would have no problem with the relationship moving the slowly moving in the slow motion you could spend centuries admiring each part of her body and her resistance to his advances that is queerness would not discourage him in the second stanza the speaker laments the shortness of human life 
he confesses that they are mortal and once they die they will be unable to be intimate together once life is over the opportunity to enjoy one another is gone as no one embraces in death there is no possibility of making love after death in the last stanza the speaker urges the lady to submit in loving one another with passion because they are finite human beings he thinks they should take advantage of their sensual embodiment while it lasts uh, it's time now to look at the themes in the for in the poem the theme here you see is this time it's the time that decides everything and uh, it's the time that uh, making that makes the speaker uh, become passionate about his sex but at the same time since they are human beings they are talking about mortality and they want it more time and if they had time they would spend long time making uh, or praising the lady or accepting or awaiting the lady's answer or response but being mortal and he has to propose her to make love as soon as possible uh, another theme here is freedom or confinement and uh, you have uh, the freedom of making anything but the time and other worldly things these are making him limited the speaker with his three arguments as i already mentioned here in the discussion with the form uh, he tries to persuade his queen stress to sleep and make love with him to him the mistress should not say no as the shadow of time or shadow of death is approaching and it will take all the joys of their lives love in yath should be the condition of the true lovers therefore they should seize the present moment of life and enjoy life to the fullest i think uh this is about summary and if i were queen mistress what would i do what response i would make so there's the question here if i were the queen mistress of the poem i would not agree with the speaker who claims to be a high rate lover as he started talking about time using hyperboles that is unnecessary exaggerations i knew that this fellow is trying to court me for seduction i had seen and heard so many handsome fellows like him who came claiming themselves as the true and devoted lovers listening to the highly chosen words phrasing my beauty and youth were coming from any young courtly lovers i'm used to such lustful fellows i'm used to be aware of such lustful fellows i'm very much aware of their proposal to make love in kiss my youth and beauty fairs with the span of time i shall grow old and there will be no suitors left for me at all they say but i don't believe it i would ask the speaker the following questions for my arguments number 1 why should i be frank with you f- for your intentional phrase number 2 are you physically or spiritually attracted to me number 3 aren't you in the world of imagination and fashion when you adore my beauty and youth number 4 If you are true lover why can't you show your passions and devotion instead of lustful passion Number 6 Who says yot is only for sensual fashion Can't we use for creative activities Is love for the lovers when they are only young and ripe Number 8 
Her love continue even when the lady is dead and her lamb. Uh, can't love continue when the lady is dead and in her tomb, as in William Wordsworth Lucy poems. Number nine. Is your love for love or love for lust? Number ten. Why do you show your conscience about my beauty, youth, honor, and virginity? Can't we become just friends? Why can't you retain, restrain yourself and hide your cupidity? And number 12, don't I have the right to decide whom should I love or marry? I even have the right. Can't I remain without being married? Okay, <clears throat> with the discussion, okay, with the discussion, I'm coming to the conclusion of my today's session of discussion of To His Queer Mistress by Andrew Marvel. I'm sure you got the points and you are clear with the description and analysis. If you have any comments regarding my discussion, you can put in my comment box. Please don't forget to subscribe and like our channel. Thank you very much.